Thank you, Martha. That was great. Um, I, I'm really honored to receive this. Uh, I want to thank the Federation and thank Rich Robeson. Um, and when I was trying to think of what I should talk about today, one of the only um, sort of quote I could think of was standing on the shoulders of giants. I, I actually tried to Google it today to see who that quote is attributed to, and I really couldn't figure it out. But one of the things is for us, and, and I still consider myself a new parent, even though I probably don't look at it that way, but I think that one of the things for us and for the parents in the room, it's people like Martha Ziegler, like the people that got together and wrote the special education law, like the people for the Federation for Children with Special Needs, that made our lives so much better and so much easier. So it's the work, and when I got here tonight, looking around the room, and this is the disability community and the people that really have made a huge difference, uh, that created the life that we have for our families and for our children. Um, it's, it's something that's really important. And I just, I had a, I had a, I think that's really important to talk about that. First off, I also want to um, congratulate the other award winners. Um, I wish I went before um, Angela Perry, of course, because she was a dynamic speaker, and as soon as she started, um, I, I told everybody at my table, boy, I should have gone before her. <laughs> and then, of course, Janet Vos. Unfortunately, I heard her joke. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, they, you know, I'm honored to be with those people. And honored to, um, some of the other um, speakers talked about the, the class of people that are uh, receiving the, these awards, and it's just phenomenal. I'm very honored to be part of that group. Um, I just want to share a personal story. Rich told me to tell a personal story, so I'm going to tell a personal story. Part of it that I think is going to be not unique to anybody in this room, at least not unique to the families in this room. And I'm going to tell, it's an old story um, that relates to my family. Um, what happened was, and I did go to Holy Cross. I was an English major. I should have read all those books that um, <laughs> were mentioned. They were on my list, but somehow I never got to them. <laughs> but anyway, I was in class then with, um, actually, my wife, Marianne, who's here, and my family who's here. And when I was in... In school at Holy Cross in the 70s, when we studied education and we studied um, kids with special needs, they told us about mainstreaming. At least I paid attention for that part. Um, so our son was born. I got to introduce my family, which I didn't do yet. Um, they're all here. Um, my son, David. Stand up, Dave. Um, my daughter, Laura. My son, Jesse and my wife, Marianne, I want to thank them for all coming today. <laughs> but, but the story I want to share, it's an old story. Um, one of the things that, that was said by one of the speakers, I think it was Janet before, was how hard we have to fight even though we have the special education law and how hard we have to continue to fight because of the special education law. The story that I want to tell is the story um, when my son was born in 1984 and we went to enroll him in kindergarten, it was still in the 80s, and so me and my wife showed up thinking, oh yeah, we studied this, you know, he's going to be included. So we showed up at the kindergarten, and, you know, my wife said, he wants to, we want my son to go to this school, and they said, okay, yeah, we can, we can do that. And he said, I'm going to, the principal said, I'm going to show you the classroom. And he brought us on that long walk past all the other classrooms and then brought us to the special needs classroom and said, here's his classroom. And my wife said, you don't understand. We want him to be in one of these other classrooms. And I think that was sort of the beginning of our battles on how do we do this? How do we educate our son? So we did well. My wife and I both did well. Um, we somehow convinced the school that David should enter um, the regular education class and start in a regular program. And Dave was actually the first person in Ashland with a significant disability to enter the public school system. So 
So <laughs> Dave's done great. He's actually, he's, Dave's 29 now. We turned 29 a few weeks ago. He, he lives in uh, supported housing. He has his own business, car detailing, all in a daveswork.com if you want to schedule your car. I'll put a little plug in for him. Um, so he has supports, but it is his own business to do that. So he's done very well. He's had a great education. Um, the other piece that I want to talk about relates directly to the Federation and the work that they did and the work that a lot of people in this room actually did in, um, in forming the special education law. Most people in the room know that our special education law formed by some of the folks here was the lightning bolt that started everything. Because we started here in Massachusetts, it was brought across the country, it became the law of this country to include people. It's now actually the law of the world since the United Nations um, and the rights of persons with disabilities is looking at the same language that, that you folks talked about then. But what I see now as a state representative is I see the fruits of that work. We now have more than a generation of students that were educated with every other student and had every opportunity and access to education as everybody else. And it's been a generation. And I want to talk about a couple people. One is um, a guy who works in my office. He actually works and does most of the work as a lobbyist. He, he lobbies other members, other uh, representatives, uh, other senators and their staff on disability issues. Um, his name is John Anton, and he was, John is not here, but John has Down syndrome, and he was one of the first people to be take advantage of the special education law in Massachusetts. His mom was be able to bring him to, to, to regular school. He went through the regular school system. So he's been working in my office for a couple years lobbying. He just spent three months in Washington lobbying in Washington, uh, lobbying at the national level. That's an example of the kind of earth-shattering work that happened with the special education law. The other piece that I see is that the law empowered people with disabilities and people with intellectual disabilities in their lives. Since I've been in the legislature, I've been in nine years, I've seen the steady growth of people with intellectual disabilities coming before our committees, testifying on their own behalf because they had the skills and the empowerment to do that and making a difference in saying, look it, we have disabilities, this is what we want for our lives. That's been critical and that's part of what we're seeing and it's part of some of the changes that we're making or trying to make at the state level. I wanna talk about two, two um, programs. One is the Inclusive Concurrent Enrollment Program, which is a phenomenal program that is including people with intellectual disabilities in our public colleges and universities in inclusive settings. So in the regular classroom. We've now had that program for six years. We've had tremendous success. Um, we now, I just had a conversation a few months ago with the chancellor of uh, University of Massachusetts Amherst which is our flagship university, who says that he wants to be a leader in this. So we are moving ahead, and it's really important. Um, one of the things, and this is a plug from my staff director who gave me this napkin with something written on it. <laughs> and I do what she says. We passed in the state, but in the House budget, we're in the middle of the budget process, we we, we got um, $700,000 to fund this program for this year. We actually need $960,000. This has now gone to the state senate. So you should all, when you go home, or maybe on Monday, call your state senator, and you can find your state senator if you don't know by going to mass.gov and plugging in your address. Call your state senator and say, you think the inclusive concurrent enrollment is program is very important to our communities and you want it funded at $960,000. Don't use my name. <laughs> the other thing is actually, and one of the things that we see with the, uh, Brian Heffernan, I think he's probably still here. Brian is one of the students who's been working 
with the Inclusive Concurrent Enrollment Program. He's now actually working as a lobbyist himself. I guess maybe we're just turning out a bunch of lobbyists from this program, but he's been lobbying with Mass, um, mass Advocates for Children as well. So we're really seeing the fruits of our labor and the fruits of the labor of everybody in this room. Uh, do I have another program for you? I thought I did, but I can't remember it. So anyway, um, I want to thank you all for this in this room, whether you just contributed money or you've dedicated your lives to this cause. It's really important. And I think one of the things that I, I want to leave where I started when we talked about standing on the shoulders of giants, there's lots of giants in this room, lots of giants that, that people like me were able to stand on their shoulders. We need the next generation of giants to stand up and to help the next generation behind it. So I hope you'll all be part of that. Thank you very much.